His anger started to boil the second he saw the tears running down his daughter's face. He got even angrier when he looked over the fence and saw his neighbors with smug smirks on their faces. His hands balled into tight fists. They ruined everything he'd planned, and he was ready to make them pay. He could have just let what happened go, but Scott Hunter wasn't that kind of man. In fact, his colleagues at the insurance firm had a nickname for him, the Pitbull. Once Scott got his teeth into something, he'd never let it go. So when he saw his eight-year-old princess in tears on her own birthday, he knew he had to do everything in his power to make things right. And God help the people who had crossed him. All Scott and his wife had wanted to do was throw their young daughter a small party. When Nina decorated their yard cheerfully with balloons and inflated the bounce house, she never anticipated there would be a problem. The day in question turned out to be the worst of young Evie's life. Her parents had worked hard to make sure she had a memorable birthday, but Evie would remember it for all the wrong reasons. Scott and Nina had been living in their home in the suburbs for four years. Unfortunately, there was nothing they could do about the nasty elderly couple living next door. They had squabbles about the noise their daughter made when she played with her friends in the yard, the smoke that wafted over their fence from the barbecue, and any other petty reason the neighbors could find to complain about. For months, Scott and Nina had tried to keep the peace, but the neighbors were about to cross a line. The day of Evie's eighth birthday started on the right note. The weather was perfect, the little girl was excited about her party, and Scott was in good spirits. He mowed the lawn, inflated the kiddie pool, and set up the bounce house. The kids and their parents began to show up. Scott fired up the barbecue while Nina set out the snacks. Nobody noticed two pairs of angry eyes peering over the back fence. Hey, Scott, the miserable old man bellowed. We're trying to enjoy our porch, so tell your sprogs to shut up. They're children, Bernard. It's a party, Scott said, clenching his jaws and turning around. He continued to work the grill as the children splashed happily in the pool, but he should have known that his rude neighbor wouldn't leave it at that. Evie's eyes sparkled when she opened her gifts. For some reason, her favorite present was the large inflatable ball that her grandma had bought her. All the kids clamored to play with it, bouncing it to each other and kicking it against the fence. When somebody accidentally kicked it too high and it bounced into the neighbor's yard, nobody could have anticipated what would happen next. Bernard's wife went over and scooped it up. She held the ball in her hands for a few seconds while the kids waited. Everyone expected her to simply toss it back. Please throw it over, Evie pleaded. Instead, she handed it to her husband. He made sure everyone was looking while he fetched a screwdriver from the garden shed. Bernard kept unbroken eye contact with Scott. Then a satisfied expression came over his face as he slowly and deliberately stabbed the ball. Then the malicious man clumsily smashed it with his hands and throttled all the air out of it. Scott was incredulous. Evie screeched. The old man seemed to get so much pleasure out of causing this little girl tears, and he wasn't even finished yet. Evie cried and cried, but eventually her mom managed to placate her. Nina just wanted to continue to party as if nothing had happened, but Scott was seeing red. As the day grew on, he grew angrier and angrier. If the neighbors enjoyed their porch so much, he'd make sure they never enjoyed it again. Scott had never been so angry in his life. He wasn't about to just let it go. They'd ruined his little girl's birthday. Now they'd have to live with the consequences. His plan was simple. He could see the neighbor's porch from his yard. Every time the miserable old couple came outside, he was ready. Scott thought carefully about all the ways he could make his insufferable neighbor's lives a living hell. He thought about everything from poisoning their lawn to other, more harmful measures. But he wasn't a fool. He knew that he couldn't do anything drastic or illegal, so he decided to be an annoyance instead. He'd teach them to make his daughter cry. Every time Scott saw the neighbors sitting on their porch, he'd go to his garage and gleefully fire up his air compressor. Then he'd make a racket with his gas leaf blower in the yard. At first, the neighbors would complain, but they couldn't compete with the noise. Every day, Scott would watch the porch and wait for them. It worked every single time. Scott was obsessed with getting payback, but he could bide his time. He'd do it until the couple died or moved out if he had to. He would be a constant reminder of their unacceptable behavior, and he'd never let it go. They soon realized that they'd made a huge mistake when they crossed him. Scott continued with his noisy regime for years. True to his word, he never let Bernard and his wife enjoy their backyard ever again. 
He didn't even pretend that he was doing anything other than making as much noise as he could every time they set foot outside. And every time he'd drive those miserable neighbors right back into their house. But Scott isn't the only person to be inconvenienced by his audacious neighbors. He shares that in common with a woman named Shenna Berry. But her revenge on her neighbor was next level. She knew she should just stay quiet and wait for the storm to be over, but she couldn't help herself. After all, her neighbor was the one who had a problem with her. The gloves were off. They traded slur for slur, insult for insult, dig for dig. Without wiping the sweat from her furious face, her neighbor leaned closer and uttered three words, just you wait. Then with a barely concealed smirk, the woman turned on her heels and walked away, as if she was strolling in the park on a glorious summer day. It was at that moment that Shenna knew exactly how she should make her pay. Her meddling neighbor was going to get what she deserved. Shenna Barry had waited her entire life for this moment. After working her way up the corporate ladder, she finally could afford her dream home. It had everything she was looking for, a giant open-plan kitchen, three bedrooms, and a stunning garden with a beautiful fountain at its center. The newly single mom thought this would be her dream house, in her dream neighborhood. But there was something she hadn't accounted for. The moving day soon arrived, and after two days of unloading and unpacking boxes, Shenna was finally finished. But as she sat down on the sofa, she saw another moving van outside, but this time it was for next door. Shenna wondered what her new neighbors would be like. So far, everyone in the neighborhood had been incredibly polite and welcoming. Her new neighbors had to be the same, right? Shenna swiftly went around to her new neighbors to introduce herself, taking note of the flashy red sports car that was parked outside. She rang their doorbell and waited for a few seconds. Then the front door opened and Shenna introduced to the middle-aged couple, Alice and Lewis. They seemed nice enough, but Shenna had no idea how wrong she was. A few months later, the new neighbors had settled in. It was summertime, so Shenna and her neighbors were on a mission to tidy their yards. Shenna liked to bag her leaves and grass cuttings, keeping them for mulch to fertilize her garden after she mowed the lawn. Curiously, peeking over the fence, she couldn't help but notice that her neighbors were much more tidy. One day, Shenna finished her weekend yard work and left the grass cuttings and neatly raked leaves on the lawn while she popped out to run some errands. Despite having been gone for only half an hour, she returned from the grocery store and found something that left her at a complete loss for words. Shenna, juggling her baby in the bags of groceries, got out of her car and walked to the front door, but the sight before her made her mouth drop. All the grass cuttings and leaves that she'd left on her lawn had been gathered up and maliciously strewn all over her porch. But that wasn't all. There was something else. A note was stuck to her front door, and what was rudely scribbled on it left Shenna reeling. Rereading the blatant threat and looking at the mess in utter disbelief, Shenna's temper began to catch a light. Just who did these people think they were? Who would do something like this? The note read, if this ever happens again and you don't do your lawn properly from now on, there will be consequences. It will be worse next time. Shenna was furious. Why would someone do this? She wondered who would do something like this for a second, but she knew exactly who it was. And just like that, Shenna marched over to Alice and Lewis's house. They weren't getting away with this. Shenna rang the doorbell, and as soon as Alice opened it, she burst inside her home telling her that she'd call the police for threatening her if she ever tried a stunt like this again. But Alice had no response. Her husband walked into the room and embarrassedly apologized straight away, but she stood with an infuriating smirk on her face. Shenna wasn't having any of it. A little voice in Shenna's head kept telling her to just stay quiet, but she couldn't help herself. Alice obviously had a problem with her, and after reading her threat, the gloves were off. She launched into a tirade against the woman, but all Alice could spit out was, just you wait. That's when Shenna decided that she'd make it her life's mission to make her pay. For six months, Shenna took delight in irking her neighbor. She purposely didn't mow the front lawn, but made sure to mow the backyard. You see, she wanted to make a display of bagging those cuttings and putting them out on the front lawn for her neighbor to see. Her plan worked, and Alice was boiling with anger at what she'd done. That's when Alice decided to retaliate. The feud between Alice and Shenna continued for months. One night, Alice poured an entire bottle of dishwashing liquid in Shenna's fountain while she slept, so Shenna doused Alice's plants in vinegar, killing her prize rose bushes. It was going too far. Then Alice did something so diabolical that Shenna was forced to act. Just when things couldn't get any worse, Alice started playing music at a deafening volume. 
Shenna tossed and turned all night, feeling the bass from Alice's enormously newly purchased sound system. Shenna's temper was like a firework. Once the sparks started to sizzle, there was very little time to duck and cover, and this was the last straw. After a restless night, Shenna rubbed her tired eyes as she took a sip of coffee. She blearily looked out the kitchen window, surprised to see Alice waltzing up her drive with a code enforcement officer. Alice was making a show of pointing Shenna's front lawn out to the officer. What was she doing? Shenna ran out the door to confront Alice and defend herself. She couldn't believe that she'd gotten law enforcement involved. But the meddling woman was adamant. The code officer was there to force Shenna to clean up her lawn. Then Shenna saw something outside Alice's house. Suddenly, her stern mouth relaxed and a slow grin began to spread across her face. Shenna narrowed her eyes and looked at Alice's red sports car that was constantly parked on the street. Right then and there, she knew what she needed to do. Finally, Alice was going to get what was coming to her. If Alice wanted to play dirty, she could do it better. Shenna sat quietly at the window, smiling to herself and watching the scene unfold. The tow truck had arrived and, sure enough, Alice had a problem. She railed and yelled, frantically trying to stop them from towing her car. She fumed and raged, but she couldn't stop them. She watched helplessly as the truck carrying her car disappeared down the road. Shenna had spoken to the code officer and had Alice's car towed from where it was parked on the street, right in front of her own house. She sat and smirked as she watched the woman unleash a torrent of curses and a blind rage. But the poetic justice of it was still to come. Shenna knew that a code enforcement officer couldn't force her to clean up her front yard. Nobody could. Calling the authorities was Alice's last-ditch effort to make Shenna's life difficult. The house was a freestanding unit and wasn't policed by a homeowners association either. But Alice hadn't thought about what codes she was violating. Coincidentally, code enforcement can't force you to mow your lawn, but if you leave a vehicle on the street for over 72 hours without moving it, they'll happily impound it. $600 and a lot of frayed nerves later, Alice eventually got her car back. And Shenna? She hasn't heard a peep from Alice since. Our next hero is a man named Dave Miller. He exacted his revenge on his neighbors in an extremely creative way. All he needed were some cell phones and a bit of ingenuity. Dave Miller considered himself an average guy. He loved to build cardboard forts with his kids, find unique solutions to family problems, and brought a burst of imagination to his job in web design. Dave's skills, however, are about to be tested by the neighbors and their dog. A little barking was okay. It was in their nature, after all. But on the first night they moved into their house and let their heads at the pillows, the symphony yaps, yips, and howls started. From there, it was a domino effect. The kids would wake up, he and his wife would have to get up, and then no one slept. They had only viewed the house during the day, so Dave and his family had no idea about the loud monster next door. Things got so bad that he even timed it one evening. And no joke, it barked constantly from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. It wasn't until he saw a man walk in during the wee hours of the morning did he realize the couple worked nights and slept during the day. Weeks passed and his family started to suffer deeply. There was no choice, he had to act. David planned to keep the conversation civil, and it started that way, but it quickly devolved into some pretty thick vitriol and ended with a dog's bark, what do you expect, and then a door slammed in his face. That was it. He considered himself a level-headed guy, but things were getting out of hand. He knew things wouldn't change unless he acted, and unless he broke out those special skills he was so proud of. The idea came in a flash, and he rushed home to get the needed equipment. It wouldn't take much, but the results would have something to savor. He first took his secondary phone and, while the neighbors were away, set it up on one of their windows so it covered the area the dog roamed in. Next, he took his primary phone and put it in just the perfect spot. All the while, his wife looked at him like he'd grown two heads. Just wait, he said, you're going to love this. As the sun went down and the unending barking echoed around the dimly lit street, all he had to do was press two buttons and wait. Finally, when 9 a.m. rolled around and he was sure the neighbors were fast asleep, he pulled out his stereo, faced it at their window and hit play and cranked the volume. It was a simple plan, but still so creative. Dave had recorded the dog barking all night. Then he hooked his phone up to the stereo and let the new stretch of yaps and howls continue. It didn't take long until they heard a loud bang on their door. 
Dave grabbed his morning coffee with a huge grin and slowly sauntered to the front door. On the other side, a red-faced man with a scruffy mustache and angry eyes pointed right in Dave's face. We're trying to sleep. Shut up your dog. Dave stifled a chuckle and pulled out the other phone, the one that had taken the video. He pressed play and said, It's not my dog, it's yours. I recorded him since you miss out on what dogs do. The mustache stood on the porch with a gawking stare. For good measure, Dave added, I'm just playing the radio at normal, allowable city time and I'll do this every day. The neighbor stomped off in a rage. But would it work? As Dave strutted back into the kitchen, his wife sat at the table, shaking her head and finally letting out the laughter she'd been holding back. I can't believe you did that, she said, but wow, it was amazing. The hours passed and night finally settled in. The neighbor's car pulled out of the driveway. Now was the moment of truth. It was utterly blissful. All they could hear was the chirping of crickets and the occasional car driving by. There wasn't even a tiny growl. The twins slept soundly for the first time in weeks, and his wife didn't look like she was going to pick up a baseball bat and handle things her own way. There was just one more thing to do. It was too good of a story, he had to share it. He knew there were people out there who would find this useful for their own doggy problems and wanted a non-confrontational solution. But he had no idea that his Reddit post would go viral. It really was the best ending he could have hoped for.